2 Chronicles chapter 6. Second Chronicles chapter 6. And speaking of prayer, we have here the example of Solomon as uh, he finished building the temple and he was standing before all Israel preparing to consecrate it. Much work had gone into this, much labor. The design was done by David his father and uh, obviously it was said of David that his hands were bloody and he could not do the work. And So Solomon at peacetime was given the duty to carry out the work. Uh, during this time of peace, over all of the world really, he had, he had the resources, he had the uh, wherewithal, he had the wisdom, he had the, the people, he had the support of the nations around him to get this great work done. And at the end of it all, Solomon lays out this prayer before the God of Israel. I just wanted to read that for us. Second Chronicles chapter 6. Then said Solomon, The Lord hath said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. But I have built an house of habitation for thee, and a place for thy dwelling forever. And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build an house in, that my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, For as much as it was in thine heart to build a house for my name, thou didst well in that it was in thine heart. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son which shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house for my name. The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken. For I am risen up in the room of David my father, and am set on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And in it have I put the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the children of Israel. And he stood before the altar of the Lord, in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands. For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court. And upon it he stood and kneeled down upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward heaven and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven nor in earth which keepest covenant, and showest mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. Thou which hast kept with thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him, and spakest with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hands as it is this day. Now therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him, saying, there shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit upon the throne of Israel. Yet so that the children take heed to their way to walk in my law, as thou hast walked before me. Now then, O Lord God of Israel, let thy word be verified which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. But will God in very deed dwell with man on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house which I have built. Have respect, therefore, to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. O Lord my God, hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee, that thine eyes may be upon this house day and night, upon the place whereof thou hast said thou wouldest put thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer with which thy servant prayeth toward this place. Hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel, which they shall make toward this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven. And when thou hearest, forgive. 
If a man sin against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou from heaven, and do, and judge thy servants by requiting the wicked, by recompensing his way upon his own head, by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. And if thy people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall return and confess thy name, and pray and make supplication before thee in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, and, to, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest them to their fathers. When the heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, Yet, if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou dost afflict them, then hear thou from heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel. When thou hast taught them the good way wherein they should walk, and send rain upon the land which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. If there be a dearth in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be blasting, or mildew, or locusts, or caterpillars, if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore, or whatsoever sickness there be, then what prayer, or what supplication soever, shall be made of any man, or of any, or of all thy people Israel, which every one shall know his own sore, and his own grief, and shall spread forth his hands in this house, then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive and render unto every man according to all his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men, that they may fear thee, to walk in thy ways, so long as they live in the land which thou givest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning the stranger which is not of thy people Israel, but is come from a far country, for thy great name's sake, and thy mighty hand, and thy stretched out arm, if they come and pray in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, and fear thee, as doth thy people Israel, and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. If thy people go out to war against their enemies by the way that thou shalt send them, and they pray unto thee toward this city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from the heavens their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man which sinneth not, then, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them over before their enemies, and they carry them away captives into a land far off or near. Yet if they bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captive, and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, and we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly. If they return to thee with all their heart and with all their soul, in the land of their captivity, whither they have carried them captives, and pray toward their land, which thou givest unto their fathers, and toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house which I have built in thy name, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Now, my God, let, I beseech thee, thine eyes be open, and let thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. A great prayer Solomon gives before all people Israel. And I love that his prayer is that more prayers would be answered. He's seeking God and he's saying, God, I've built this place. And what is this place? You, 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 you can't be contained by the heaven of heavens. How much less this house which I have built thee. And yet God promised his name would be there. He promised he would abide there for his people Israel's sake. So he gives this prayer unto God and he says in consecration and in, in, in separation to this place in order that this place would be honored and respected as you would wish, Lord. 
I just ask God that this place would be a picture of the prayers answered for the people of Israel. See, it was just a building, and I believe Solomon recognized this. But, but the idea is there that, that you need to look and live, the same as we saw in the Old Testament when the serpent was raised. Look and live. So he says, if, if, your, if, your, if your people sin, forgive them when they come and they pray unto thee in this place. If heaven is shut up and there's no rain because they have sinned against thee, and they look to this place and pray after thee and ask for forgiveness and confess your name, Lord, hear their prayer, answer their prayers. In verse 28, if there be a dearth in the land, if there be pestilence, or if there be blasting, or mildew, or locusts, or caterpillars, and all these harmful things that come upon the people, if they look unto thee in this place, where you've chosen to place your name there, and pray unto thee, and seek after thee, and turn from their wicked ways, then hear thou, Lord, and answer them, and be there for them. Even so, here we are today, and we don't have a building to think of, but we have the Savior that we're in, and He in us. And we can, we can think about all of these, these different things and these different scenarios that he played out in his mind as he says, Lord, if the enemy attack, Lord, if there be a dearth, Lord, if there be no rain, Lord, if they sinned against thee, Lord, if there be pestilence, Lord, just hear the prayer of your people when they come to you with that honest heart and they ask for you. God promises to do so, I believe, even for his people today. We just look to him and we ask these things of him. We've been talking about prayer the last couple weeks. I know I broke it up. You could, you could go back and you could listen to all the sermons kind of in order. But um, the rubber meets the road with prayer when you actually just get to it. <laughs> uh, we can teach about the different uh, the outlines for prayer and, the, and the, the manner of prayer. And, you know, we can even talk about the postures of prayer. It's hard to talk, though, about the heart and the action of prayer so much. It's something that you have to want and seek after and desire. And unfortunately for most people, we don't get that until we get to a point where we're pressed up against the wall. When we have a sickness and, you know, taking over the world. When we have financial issues. When we have tribulation, people persecuting us. We're pressed beyond measure. That's when we finally decide we're going to seek after God. But I believe we've got to be people that seek after Him when it's good and when it's bad. <laughs> when it's right and when it's wrong. He says in, in verse uh, 1 of chapter 7, it says, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord Upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord God, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. A terrible sight brings them to the point where great fear comes upon them. And they say, He is good. His, his mercy endureth forever. Why? Because God had shown himself to be true. He said, Build me a house. They built the house. And I wonder if people had doubts as it was going up. And even as he's praying, God, would you hear the prayers? Maybe the conversation had really only happened between Solomon and the Lord. But when the fire came down after the prayer, it was verified in all of their eyes that God would be in this place. He is good. His mercy endureth forever. And that's exactly what Solomon asked for, and I believe exactly what God promised to do for his people. It continues, if you look over in uh, 2 Chronicles 7, in verse 12. After all of the sacrifices, after the great congregation had come, after eight, eight days were the greatest sacrifice you've ever seen in the people of Israel's life, in, in their time frame, took place. It says, And the Lord appeared, verse 12, unto Solomon by night, and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their 
land. We've heard that verse so many times in regard to healing for the land. And again, I don't think these things really enter into our heart, into our minds until we're really at a situation now in, in this world where it, we're pressed beyond measure, right? We haven't seen perhaps with this, this virus the things that other parts of the world have. Uh, there's all sorts of misinformation, facts or fiction. It's, it's so hard to tell. But there's definitely a great fear going on. I mean, we were out soul winning, and I went and talked to a guy, and, and I, just, I just said, you know, if, if, if you were to die today, are you certain? And, and his face was just, just, I don't even know how to describe it. If a face could be disheveled, <laughs> is what I saw in this guy. And he, and he just said, it, it's, it's so bad. The world, it's so bad. We're not recovering from this. He said, I think this is the rapture. Ignorant, of course. But, but, but to see people so distraught, <laughs> you know, even the doors that we knock today, you know, did, did you not notice people are like standing back in their doors? There's, there's fear. There's, there's terror. And rightfully so. And God wants it to be so because in these times, this is when his people come and pray to him. I wish, and I would to God, we weren't so ignorant of his power and, and of his might and of his willingness to be merciful to us. And we would go to him before we're pressed, but that's just the human condition. You know, it was even said, the guy, the one guy, um, I was so winning, and he's like, I'm an atheist, and my soul and partner was like, yeah, until trouble happens. <laughs> and isn't it so? You're an atheist until, oh, God, I'm so sick. I'm dying of cancer. I'm dying of a disease. I'm dying. Help me, God. The God that they say they don't believe in. We're the same way as Christians, you know. Do we really believe in our God? You know, we believe and trust him for salvation, but do we really believe on him if we're not asking him? if we're not talking to him, if we're not getting involved, getting him involved in our day-to-day. -day. I don't think we are. I don't think we're believing of him and on him to the extent that we should. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a sad state of, of affairs when, when Christians are, are prayerless, when we just, we just don't talk to our Lord. You know, I don't know how many times at the door I've told people, I'm like, look, just like you and I are having a conversation, God wants to hear from you and that. And then I go home and I don't have those same just just talking conversations with the Lord. There was times in my life when I was, I was better at it, I was more dedicated, I was more focused on it, but it wasn't in the forefront of my mind. But then we get pressed, then we get the squeeze up put on us, then we get troubles and trials that come into our lives, and suddenly we're all praying Christians. I wish it weren't so. I think God knew it, though. I, th I think he knew our frame. I think he, he, he fashioned us, and so this isn't a shock to him. So this is what, exactly why these things happen. <laughs> He's, he, he, even in answering Solomon, he said, you know, yes, Solomon, comes to him by night, yes, I have heard your prayer, I have chosen this place, I have, exactly as you asked me to, I have answered thy prayer. And so, if I shut up heaven, and there be no rain, if I command the locusts, if I send pestilence among my people, again, we're not, we're not spared from it, Right? If my people, right, which are called by my name, Christians, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It's not about us going out and, and getting the world to straighten up their act. If God's people will humble themselves, you know, stop thinking so highly of ourselves. Stop, stop thinking that we're, 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 we're something better than we are. Stop thinking that we're God's gift to God. <laughs> You know, thinking that, um, you know, there's any good in us that he didn't give us. If, if my people, he says, will humble themselves, will, 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 will not think as highly of themselves, will, will, will be willing to, to put themselves out there and be embarrassed for the cause of Christ, will be willing to put themselves out there and, and suffer shame for his name, if my people will be humble. Next, and pray. And again, that's something that we just don't do. And do you know why we don't pray? It's because we're not humble. It's like a it's like a chain reaction. We think we got this life figured out until we're at a point where we just we have no choice but to pray. Right? There's always something in our mind. We talked about this last week. We go to God and we say, God, fix my problems, but we're scheming about how we're going to fix our own problems. So we're we're proud. We th we think we can do it. I got this, Lord, but just in case, I'm gonna ask you so you can you, you got my back, right? 
If my people shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And, and you know what? That, that's, that's the thing. We, we need to seek after God. You know why we don't seek after his face? Because when we stand in front of his face, we're ashamed. Mm -hmm. I witnessed to a girl this weekend, and, um, and I, I said it. I, I, I said this with, with the utmost respect, but when I went and talked to her, she looked down immediately as soon as I like, brought up the Bible as if she was standing before God. Because there was just this, oh, like, like, like a child when they're busted doing something wrong. She just, and the whole time I was giving that gospel, she would, she, she wouldn't seek after the face of God. God had to go and seek after her face. And in, in, in my form, I mean, who am I? And I go and I'm preaching her the gospel and I'm trying to encourage her, but I, but I stress also as I felt led of God to, to stress. And to in, in, in talk about sins, dark sins, deep sins. I, I saw in her face that she, she had done some terrible things, right? Of which we're all guilty. But nevertheless, sometimes it's not just bringing up the one lie that will send somebody to hellfire. But there's been a few times in my life where just, just to, for the sake of showing God's mercy, I stress to somebody that, you know, no matter how rotten you've been, no matter how wicked you can could have been this and that and I'll name sins and, and just 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 so that I can bring her to a point where she saw the grace of God and left with a smile on her face. But again, it's the it's the face of God that we won't seek after because we're just like that as believers. I saw that in her face and I'm thinking to myself, like, how often would I, if God was to stand in front of me, be the same way, like, oh, just face down, just ashamed. I don't seek his face because as soon as I see his face, I'm ashamed of myself. Right, we as believers, we are, we are born again and, and new men on the inside, right? The inward man is perfect and will stand pristine before God. But this flesh still has so many sins and so many wrongdoings and, and it's so tainted that sometimes you just, you can't even think about seeking the face of God. How many great saints of old do you find when they saw the Lord's face were on their faces dead? God says, and turn from their wicked ways. And there's the rub, right? You, you, God wants us as believers to be humble enough to pray, to seek after the Lord's face, and to turn from our wicked ways. Believers here, repenting of our sins, turning from all the wrong that we have done, forsaking it in our heart, and trusting Christ to cleanse us in it. If my people would do these things, the Lord says, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. And I like how he brings it up here in a fashion where Solomon lifted up the temple and talked about the temple even though he was humble in dealing with the temple. And yet God here deals directly with the people and asks that they would seek him. Seek his face. Not so much not so much after a building. Not so much after an ark. Not so much after the furnishings. But seek me, seek my face, turn from your wicked ways. And this is, this is, I believe, one of the strongest testimonies of Scripture that tells God's people what God's people need to do if they want their scenario out there to be better. If they want this, this country to turn around, if they want this continent to turn around, if they want this world to turn around, you know who they need to point at as the problem first? Themselves. So... Again, I don't, I don't think we're a praying group, okay? And I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. I don't know anyone's scenario or situation. But I know my own heart, and I know my own tendencies, and I know that I too often am not humble. I'm not praying. I'm not seeking God. I'm not turning from my wicked ways, and too often my wicked ways are exactly those things. I'm not humble. I'm proud. I'm not praying. I'm doing things on my own self. I'm not seeking His face. I'm seeking my own ways and my own way of doing things. And so, in teaching on the pattern of prayer, it just kind of occurred to me that once we got the pattern, that's great, but let's try to get some, some practical here. And so, we're going to ask for some volunteers, and there's no greater time than this. We're assembled together. There's no greater opportunity that's been put before us where where there's 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 turmoil like i said the weekend's been calm we went out we had a great time soul winning we saw salvations 
but it's always once the week starts, and I, I, I promise you, you'll wake up tomorrow and, and something will be in the news, earth shattering. There's gonna be, there's gonna be something else, right? It's like, it's like it's the media's job these days to just every morning scare you, scare you. So uh, what, what better time than this, Christians, we're gathered together, Sound Words Baptist Church, to, to put some practice to what we've learned the last couple weeks. And so Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, he says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, uh, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Brother Shane, would you mind just just uh, just praying after that fashion? Talk about our Father, where he abides, how much you know, higher he is than us, and, and the, the holiness and separateness of, of his name. Would you just, just pray for us and, and pray to him? All right. Praise the Holy Father, Lord. Just, uh, thank you today, Lord, for uh, just everything that you've done for us, Lord, uh, for just uh, finding a way for all, each and every one of us here, Lord, to uh, just to hear your word and to get saved, Lord. Uh, we thank you for just... Uh, Finding that person that loved us enough to, to uh, ask us that question or or share with us somehow, whether it was YouTube or Soul Winner Lord, and uh, just uh, giving us after that the heart to just pers to, to pursue your word, Lord, to learn more about what your word has to say, Lord. You've given us so much to, to learn and to study, and uh, given us all our heart here in this church to just go forth and spread your word with anybody that's just willing to hear the word. And today we thank you for that, for that uh, gift that you've given us. And uh, we just ask that you just keep us in your word, Lord. And um, you know that things are coming, uh, as, uh, as Brother Josh said, that uh, are going to uh, probably shake all of us in the next few days, weeks, with uh, you know the news and the media. We just ask that we could just stay true to your word and just your you know, your way, and, and that we can just put our trust and faith in you. That uh, you can just uh, steer us through these uh, these scary times for a lot of the world, and just keep us focused on the prize. That we can just keep witnessing to those people, Lord, and that we will be okay. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, right? He's he's. He's, he's up there, and yet he didn't leave us down here, right? God came down, and that, that's what I rejoice more and more in the fact, is that, is that his holy name, his holy reputation, who he is, is so much greater than us. He's abiding in the heaven of heavens, and even that couldn't contain him, and yet he reached down upon us and, and saw it fit to come after and, and seek after and, and, try, and try to draw us unto him that we could be saved. The next point in the scripture is, uh, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Uh, Brother Yuri, if you wouldn't mind, uh, thy kingdom, you know, would you ask God and talk to him about, about his kingdom arriving finally, about his will being done, and, and even what's going on out here. Just, just uh, say a portion of prayer in regard to that verse of scripture.
righteous people and help us to be help us to fear you Lord because uh, we fear you and uh, the blessings after uh, the blessings will be on these people and uh, help us to proclaim your gospel to, to more people and, and, and uh, encourage them to come and join us so this uh, so will be life for you in this city and uh, we do everything for you for your glory and for your honor Lord Amen. Amen. Exactly. Whatever happens here, we know that his kingdom is the ultimate end for us. I, I don't know about you, though. I mean, as, as much as, as that, that is, is a rejoicing thought to me, his kingdom coming, his, his, his will being finally accomplished in earth, I feel like there's so much work still to do. And I feel like there's still so many family members that are lost and so many friends that are lost and, and uh, ultimately his will will be even achieved in them but I think we should seek again first the kingdom of God and his righteousness but uh, obviously in his time it would be it would be wonderful if we had a little bit more of that Amen. Amen. give us this day our daily bread give us this day our daily bread provision you know asking for God to provide according to our needs uh, not according necessarily to our wants, to our desires, but, but what, we, what we need from him. Daily bread, daily sustenance, daily provision. Uh, Brother Jamie, would you mind praying for us just in regard to provision from the Lord? Ask him to, to give us this day our daily bread. God's always good to give us what we need. Even though the grocery stores look sparse, right? We'll we'll not be hungry, right? We love shelter. We'll have what, what we need. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In another place it says, forgive us our sins. You know what? When when God says his people, if they would humble themselves, if they would pray, if they would seek his face, if they would turn from their wicked ways. Right? I think I think each one of us can think on things we've done, besetting sins, things we're struggling with. And daily, and even now as a church, just in general, let's let's ask God for forgiveness of such things. Uh, Brother Rob, would you mind asking God to forgive us our sins? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for our life and our salvation, and allowing us to gather here together at this church in your name. Um, it's a blessing, Lord, and um, we just ask you to uh, keep us humble and uh, so that we understand that, you know, we're still sinners even though we know that we're saved, but we yeah. try to live by your commandments and honor you with our lives. And just let us be long-suffering as you are to uh, people that trespass against us so that you can forgive us our sins. And we want to lead by example, Lord, and uh, just help us to stay rooted in your word. We love you, Lord, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And that's an important part of forgiveness. If you forgive not others their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. Thank you for that, brother. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. See, we've been teaching on these things, but again, the rubber meets the road when we get together as a church and just pray about these things. I think it's so important, and uh, I really just felt pressed to just enjoy this time together. And uh, Vinny, if you wouldn't mind, are you okay? Yep. All right. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Ask God for his, his His hand to guide us, okay? Dear Lord, thank you for our salvation. Thank, thank you that we're saved and we're all gathered here. Please help us not to be like tempted with evil. Mm -hmm. Definitely in a time like this, you know, yes. a lot of people would be like greedy right now going to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Help us be humble, be charitable, usually help a loved one, like, or give them like uh, for salvation. Like, this is a perfect time now. Yes. A lot of people are thinking about death right now, so let's be charitable. Let's help one another. And, yeah, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we talked about this. I mean, if, if, if our focus isn't the fact that this all belongs to God and it's Him giving back to us, then we're going to 
we're going to be in a, a lot of trouble. God says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will he step in and heal our land. Then will he step in and remove the worries and the cares. He's not interested necessarily in, in getting the wicked people to get right. Okay, He's interested in getting the wicked Christians to get right. We need to cleanse our hearts before him. And I think it all begins with just us getting together. And as Solomon consecrated the temple and set it aside as a focal point whereby all of God's people could look and seek and find forgiveness and find help and find strength and find shelter in the time of storm. Even so, I just, I just you know, dedicate this church body as a whole to, to have that as a focal point. Have us come together as a body, right? Not as a building, but a church. Uh, a focal point would be our group here, our little church in Toronto, that we would be one that is is seeking God, after God, not afraid to stand before His face, humble enough to understand our place in this world, praying after God all the time, and turning from our wicked ways. If even this church, I believe, would get this right, you would see God's mercy upon this city. You'd see God's mercy upon this province. You'd see God's mercy upon this nation. Amen. If my people... We say it all the time, you know, the righteous remnant. There are 6,000 that haven't bowed the knee to, to Baal. There's not a lot of people. You know what? We may be a, even a minority of that, fair enough. But I think we can make a great impact in our own walk if we would cleanse ourselves. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Seek his face. Not be afraid to stand before God. Not be ashamed. Step before him. Pray. Be humble. I think God will do great works. We won't have to be so worried. I know there's anxieties creeping in. There's people that are stressed out. Our family members are stressed out. Just when I start to think I'm not stressed out, somebody comes and talks to me about it, and I get stressed out. <laughs> right? But we got to be ones that just, just get after God and just trust that he's in control. He is, has the kingdom. It belongs to him. He has the power. He deserves the glory forever and ever. And just say amen. So amen. Trust him. Get after him. Pray after him. And let's do that as a body. Let's be one that encourages one another through prayer. You may not even know if I'm praying for you, so I may not even know that you may not know that they're praying for you. But let's be a church that that does that. Consecrate this body. Let's set it apart. Let's be one that just gets after God and see if He will, as He promised, take care of us, and keep us safe at this time. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this day, Lord. Um, help us to have yes a focus inwardly as a body, as a church here, and as individuals to, to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face, and to turn from our wicked ways that at this time, Lord, you'd be merciful to us even as the world goes to shambles and is all panic. God, help us to be sober-minded. Help us to be focused and steadfast on you. And that's the only way we're going to be sober-minded is if we're looking to you and following after you and chasing after you and seeking your face and all these things. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, we'll take a little